Hello again, we're doing graphs of polynomial functions, uh, same formula, same conditions, a, a sub naught or a sub zero cannot equal zero, uh, the leading coefficient can't be zero, and your n, your degree on your leading coefficient, well on all of them actually, can't be a non-negative integer. Uh, so with that to consider, those are the conditions of a polynomial. One thing that I didn't do here, that I did on the last one was, well, if, neg if there's a negative in front of the x squared, then it goes down. But uh, we've already talked about that before, so instead of going up like this, it would go down. And we're trying to use this to figure out uh, real roots or versus complex roots. Uh, real roots are uh, roots that hit the x-axis. Imaginary roots are uh, roots that don't hit the x-axis, but actually have to exist in order to uh, satisfy the actual function. Because if you don't have one, then you can't actually multiply something by something else to figure it out. Which is actually pretty cool, but I remember when I first did it, I couldn't believe it. And, uh, later on, it kind of worked out. Uh, so in this case, there's a few things to take into consideration. I try to do three different examples here. I've got x squared minus 4, uh, p, p of x equals that. You can call it y instead of p of x for all of them. And this one has two uh, zeros. This one has no zeros. And this one has one particular zero, but it's something called a double root. And I'll explain that as we go along. So I'm going to try to explain this as best as possible. Basically, what you want to do in order to figure out uh, zeros is set your uh, p of x equal to zero. I'm going to go ahead and do that over here. And I'm going to erase and then do it to the second one and the third one, etc. But basically what uh, happens is, since it's a degree of two, you have to have two roots. Uh, it could be real or it could be imaginary, but you have to have two roots. And in this case, you've got two none, but two imaginary roots. And then you've got a double root here. So really cool. And I'll try to explain this. So I've got x squared minus 4 equals p of x. Set your p of x equal to 0 in order to figure out the zeros. So I've got 0 equals x squared minus 4. Now this one's really nice because it happens to work out very easily, like they're supposed to. Add 4 to both sides, and I've got x squared equals 4. Take the square root of both sides. But when you take the square root, you've got to account for the good and the bad. x equals 2, x equals negative 2. And hence, it's got uh, two zeros, uh, two real roots. Bam, bam. Woo! That's great. This one doesn't have any zeros, but there is a way to solve it, especially since, we, since I already posted lessons on complex roots. You can go ahead and take a gander at that if you'd like to. I'm going to go ahead and erase this. But basically, um, it's an even function because both arrows are going in the same direction, and it's positive because uh, the right side, the right arrow is going up. That's all you really have to look at, or you can look at the leading coefficient. This next one actually has two roots as well. Uh, they're imaginary roots, though. They're not real, and I'll uh, see if you understand that, but it's, it's really quite cool. So I'm going to do that again. 0 equals x squared plus 4. I'm going to set my p of x equal to 0. That's how I try to figure out my roots. And I'm going to subtract 4 on both sides. And I get negative 4 equals x squared. And I have to take the square root of both sides in order to figure out the x value. So x equals, uh, uh, square root of negative 4 is not no real solution. You can't just do that anymore. It's uh, 2i and negative 2i. Those are my answers. So I've got two imaginary roots at uh, 2i and negative 2i. Remember, when it's a negative, you pull out an i, and then the square root of 4 is 2, so it's 2i. But you've got to account for the good and the bad, the plus and the minus. Now, uh, for those of you who don't believe me there and uh, don't want to do that, I'll show you what I mean. If I want to write the roots properly, uh, it's x subtracted 2i. and x plus 2i. I take the opposite in order to figure out the root. I did the same thing here too, but now it just seems complicated because it's a complex root. Well, this is 2i. I'll watch what happens. x times x is x squared. x times 2i is 2i. Negative 2i times x is negative 2i. And negative 2i times 2i is negative 4i squared. That turns out to be x squared, 2i minus 2i cancels. i squared is the same thing as negative 1. It's negative 4 times negative 1, which is plus 4. 
So it in fact does work. Now you're not going to be able to get to that uh, unless you know what the imaginary roots are. And that's what's so cool about it. You can do that with cubic roots too and fourth roots. Although that's a little bit more complex and we use a theorem for that instead. Uh, I believe it's the factor theorem. I can't remember off the top of my head. I know the guy. This, uh, actually, I don't know the guy who did it. Anymore. Descartes, maybe. Uh, something like that. Anyways, that's pretty cool. So this one doesn't have any real roots. It doesn't have any zeros. But it has two imaginary roots. And uh, since the degree is two, it's got to have two roots of some kind. It could be an imaginary. It could be a complex. I'm sorry. It could be imaginary. It could be real. But it's got to have two roots. Uh, you know, it, a lot of students don't like buying into that. They say, this is garbage, I hate this stuff. But uh, in order to ascertain what the function is, you actually have to be able to know if it's an imaginary complex root. So, pretty cool. The last one is an example of a double root. And people say, oh, there's just one zero, you know, that doesn't work like that. Well, uh, not exactly, because if I factor this bad boy out, x squared minus 2x plus 1, that turns out to be x subtract 1, x subtract 1. And the only way to get uh, back to this is by multiplying it out. So x equals 1, x equals 1. But if you don't account for both of them, when you're multiplying it back in, you're not going to get it. You're going to say, oh, it's just one root, so it's just x minus 1. Uh, how do you get back from this one to this one, though? Well, you have to account for the same root twice. So if it's a double root, you have to do that. So it's x minus 1 times x minus 1. And when you multiply that bad boy out, it's x squared minus 1x minus 1x, which is negative 2x. Negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1. So in this case, a lot of students say, well, there's just one root. Well, yeah, it, it, well, it's not that it's one root. It's that it's 1, 0, but it's a double root. And there's no imaginary roots in this case. So you actually do uh, satisfy that condition, which I think is really, really cool. But every, not everybody agrees with that. Uh, we're going to try cubics really quickly afterwards. But uh, that's you know, pretty much as far as I want to go. I might go into uh, Quartic as well, but I'm definitely not going to go into Quintic because it's basically the same stuff over and over and over again. Okay, with that said, have a good day.